Population Biology and Human Populations Part 7 will focus on what's called demographic transition, a theory about the technical and social progress of societies, of countries, as they develop over time. The significant ideas are a variety of models and indicators are employed to quantify population dynamics. Human population growth rates are impacted by a complex range of changing factors. Here is the outline of all the available movies for the Population Biology and Human Populations Unit. Use this outline to find the movie you need, and this movie is focused right here. So here's the first IB Silva statement. Define the demographic transition model. And the demographic transition model is that populations transition from a pre-industrial stage with high crude birth rates and high crude death rates to an economically advanced stage with low crude birth rates and low crude death rates. It's a model that suggests that as countries become industrialized, a decline in death rates occurs first, followed by a decline in birth rates. Now, in moving forward, look for the explanatory factors in the change in both birth rates and death rates through the course of demographic transition. And keep an eye on natural increase rate. Demographic transition has four stages, pre-industrial, transitional, industrial, and post-industrial. Now the graph displays birth rates and death rates over time through the four stages. In the pre-industrial stage, crude birth rates and death rates are both high, but natural increase rate is low. The population is not growing. In the transitional stage, death rates decline, but birth rates remain high. Notice what happens to natural increase rate. The population grows rapidly. In the industrial stage, birth rates decline, they begin to decline, as the growth in the population slows because the natural increase rate is declining. In the post-industrial stage, birth rates and death rates are both low, possibly even with higher death rates than birth rates, no growth, if not negative growth. As we dig into the demographic transition model, keep these ideas in mind. Discuss how national policies, such as a population policy, can affect human population dynamics and growth. Discuss the use of models in predicting the growth of human populations. Let me talk about models with respect to demographic transition. Demographic transition theory is a model that suggests all populations pass through predictable stages as they develop. As a model, it allows us to compare the development of any country against the model to help us understand the status of a country. As a predictor of growth, the model might encourage governments to implement policy to facilitate change. As a model, demographic transition theory is limited, as it assumes all countries proceed through the stages as they're given here. Birth rates, death rates, immigration, and emigration are in constant flux. Thus, the exact developmental path taken by any one country is not necessarily mirrored exactly by any other country. Also, just for the record, did you notice that immigration and emigration are not quantified here in the demographic transition theory? This is a, a strong limitation to the theory. Imagine Sri Lanka in the earliest 20th century. Birth rates are high as are the death rates. Imagine the causes of both high birth rates and death rates. You have high infant mortality, relatively short average lifespan, coupled with an agricultural economy reliant on child labor, with no retirement pensions once people age. Rural Sri Lankans may not have access to birth control or even how to, how to understand how to use contraceptives, even if they were accessible. Women are not employed outside the home with their primary role as someone who bears and cares for children. Then, through government action, clean water is made available to rural areas, sewage systems are installed to remove and treat waste, rural clinics provide medical care, and death rates drop. Fantastic. The headlines would be strong and well-received worldwide. But birth rates remain high. 
The size of the population increases exponentially. Notice the high natural increase rate through this period of time. In the 1970s, through development of education, particularly for women, and programs to provide contraception, and changing cultural norms about the role of women in society, birth rates begin to drop, and the natural increase rate declines slightly. Even to this day, Sri Lanka grows with a natural increase rate of 1.2%, which is above world average. Sri Lanka has passed through the stages of demographic transition, typical of many countries in the world. However, some countries, particularly some in Africa, appear to remain in the pre-industrial stage with high birth rates and high death rates. Other countries are already in the post-industrial stage with birth rates below death rates and their population shrinking. Here is a nice graph of demographic transition because it adds n population size as a third curve. As you follow along through each stage of demographic transition, keep your eye on the relationship between n and birth rates, death rates, and natural increase rate. Okay, stage one, pre-industrial, high birth rates, high death rates, low to no growth, and often the overall size of the population is not very high. Then death rates drop, most often because of policies that strengthen clean water availability, sewage sanitation systems, and rural health care. All of these measures are important and laudable, but this initiates the transition stage where the population grows exponentially. You can see exponential growth right through here as n rises sharply. Now, with further development, we enter stage three, the industrial phase. Particularly, we have policies that strengthen education for women, as well as programs to provide contraception, as well as programs that provide economic support for people in retirement. So birth rates begin to decline. Birth rates will decline. Then we enter stage four, post-industrial, with further urbanization and government programs to uh, improve education broadly, programs to empower women, programs that increase the number of employed women, provide access to contraceptives, pushing towards cultural shifts that reduce the preference for boy children, and economic shifts that reduce child labor and provide retirement pensions. Birth rates and death rates will be similar again, with the possibility that birth rates will drop below death rates. You can see why demographic transition is a model, because it generalizes the progress of a country. There are so many variables accounting for the growth of a country, such that a single theory might not accurately represent what's actually happening in the field. Consider the history of a country, its politics, economics, religious values, and culture. That said, the model holds up well, as many countries appear to follow this exact trajectory, a trajectory that does provide predictive power when looking ahead. And it's the job of the government to use that predictive power to implement policy. Demographic transition theory is a model that suggests that as countries become industrialized, a decline in death rates occurs first, followed by a decline in birth rates. It might surprise you how many countries have progressed through demographic transition. Here is a graph of the birth and death rates for Sweden over time. You can see that in the 17 and 1800s, birth rates and death rates were both high, mostly because of an absence of clean water or strong sewage sanitation systems and an absence of rural health care. But in the 1900s, Death rates dropped, followed by birth rates. Natural increase rate was high through here as the population grew. But today, Sweden's birth rates and death rates are both low. Take note here, nearly the same. So the population as a whole is no longer growing. 
you can see similar demographic transition patterns for both Sweden and Mexico, but also notice how different the transition is for each country. Remember, we have the model, but each country displays a unique pattern. Now, in 2000, right here, just before 2000, Mexico's natural increase rate appears to be 2%. How did I calculate that? Well, birth rate is 25 per thousand. Death rate, right here, 5 per thousand. The difference is 20 per thousand, or 0 0.02, or 2%. Now, I know that in 2014, the natural increase rate for Mexico is 1.4%. Now, that's a nice decline in the natural increase rate. But healthy exponential growth continues for Mexico. Mexico is almost in the industrial stage of demographic transition, but not quite. Now, generally, less economically developed countries follow this general demographic transition path, as you can see in front of you, with a large natural increase rate in recent times. And often, LEDCs still have high growth rates because birth rates have not yet dropped to the point of matching death rates. The natural increase rate remains strongly positive. Generally, more economically developed countries follow this general demographic transition trend where the country's natural increase rate never ballooned to the same degree that it did for less economically developed countries, but growth did happen. The transition stage occurred early, in the early part of the 19th or 20th century, rather than more recently. As countries progress through demographic transition, their economies shift from agriculture to industry to service. As the economy shifts from agriculture to industry to service, their per capita gross domestic product increases. GDP per capita is a close cousin of average income per person. In other words, as the economy shifts from agriculture to industry to service, income rises. For example, Kenya is a country with a high proportion of its economy in the agricultural sector. People are poor with very low per capita GDP. Kenya is a country at the start of the transition stage, stage two, with a very high natural increase rate. India is similarly in the transitional stage, stage two of demographic transition, with a high natural increase rate, but India has moved itself toward more and more service. Now, I've highlighted in red the countries that have high levels of their economy in the service sector. You can see that here and here. This is typical of post-industrial demographic transition countries. This is stage four. Interestingly, the U.S. has a very high natural increase rate, higher than one would expect for a post-industrial nation. This high natural increase rate is mostly because of immigration rates. Remember that demographic transition theory is a model, and as such, not all countries fit the theory perfectly. Notice Peru with a strong service sector, but a reasonably high natural increase rate and a relatively low per capita GDP. And China remains heavily industrial, but its natural increase rate is quite low as a result of government policy, the one-child policy implemented more than 30 years ago. Here are the demographic transition curves for the United Kingdom. Notice that the United Kingdom went through its transition period, stage two, in the late 1700s, early 1800s. The UK entered the post-industrial stage, stage four, after the Second World War. So here is a chance to review which country, A or B, is the more economically developed country or less economically developed country? I hope you can see that country B is the more economically developed country and A is the less economically developed country. Country B experienced its highest natural increase rate in 1900, while country A experienced its highest 
natural increase rate in approximately 1970. So I've answered this question, in what years was the natural increase rate the highest for each country? Now, based on these values right here, we could calculate the actual natural increase rate in 1990. Now, projections for the future would be that country B will undergo no growth, if not a decline in population, as death rates are equal to or greater than birth rates. Country A has successfully brought its birth rates down, but still has a large natural increase rate in 1990 of nearly 1.5%. So let's get our details straight, re-examine the details of each stage of demographic transition. The pre-industrial stage has difficult living conditions, high birth rates, high death rates, low population growth. The transitional stage, stage two, is industrialization, food production increases, health care improves, clean water, improved sanitation, death rates drop, but birth rates remain high, high population growth, high natural increase rate. In this graph, you can see the high birth rates and death rates of stage one, the pre-industrial stage, low growth as a result of approximately equivalent birth rates and death rates. In the transitional stage, stage two, you can see the death rates drop, but birth rates remain high, increasing the natural increase rate, and the population grows exponentially. Now the death rates drop due to improved health care, improved sanitation in villages, and access to clean water. In the industrial stage, stage three, widespread industrialization, job opportunities for women, access to birth control, drop in infant mortality, birth rates decline, low growth. In the post-industrial stage, stage four, birth rates decline further, birth rates fall below death rates, zero or negative growth. You can see in stage three that the population is still growing but is growing less quickly due to the falling birth rates, as you can see here. And in the post-industrial stage, birth rates fall to match death rates, possibly go below death rates, and the population no longer grows. Can you explain the social factors at work in each of these stages? If we apply demographic transition theory to age gender pyramids, we can see the pre-industrial pyramid here the wide base is indicative of high birth rates, but the concave quality, seen here, is indicative of high death rates, low growth. The transitional stage of demographic transitional theory is displayed by the classic fast growth age gender pyramid. Here we have the low growth industrial stage age gender pyramid here we have the negative growth post-industrial stage age gender pyramid. With any age gender pyramid, we can view the demographic snapshot as a model from which we can make predictions about the future. Governments can examine the age gender models of their countries and develop policy to deal with fast growing populations or populations that would appear to be shrinking or populations with expanding numbers of elderly requiring social service monies. In this graph, you can see the relationship between per capita GDP growth, positive in this direction, negative in this direction, and population growth rates. Populations that have low growth in per capita GDP tend to have large population growth rates, it would be these countries here. In other words, when populations are less economically developed, they tend to display high population growth rates. This would be stage two of demographic transition, the transitional stage. When populations have high growth in per capita GDP, population growth rates tend to be low. This would be industrial stage three or post-industrial stage four positions in demographic transition. Once again, you can see the relationship between per capita GDP, a close cousin of annual income, 
and natural increase rate and total fertility rate. When populations are less economically developed, as we can see with DRC in Kenya, natural increase rates are high and total fertility rates are also high. These countries are in the transitional stage of demographic transition. However, if the GDP per person is high, when economies are well developed and individuals within society have high standards of living, natural increase rates and total fertility rates are low. When education and equality among genders are important cultural norms, economies become well developed and countries progress into the post-industrial stage of demographic transition. Even within countries, in other words, subgroups within countries, display varying rates of reproduction. Subpopulations with high incomes, shown in light blue, have lower total fertility rates in both Zambia and Colombia. Notice the lower total fertility among wealthy individuals in Colombia and the lower total fertility among wealthy individuals in Zambia. Education, access to contraception, cultural values that support the role of women as equal members of society are important to reducing TFR. Total fertility rates can change over time. Government programs to educate or provide health care or access to contraceptives are important in reducing TFR. You can see that the majority of growth in the human population over the last 50 years has been in the less economically developed countries as those countries are in stage two of demographic transition. As populations become literate and skilled, the economies shift away from the agricultural sector toward the service sector. You can certainly see that here with the US, Italy, and Sweden, and Japan. And as a result, the natural increase rate decreases and populations enter stage three, the industrial, or stage four, post-industrial, of demographic transition. Through government programs and NGO work, birth rates can decline, moving countries out of the transitional stage, stage two of demographic transition, and into the industrial, stage three, or post-industrial, stage four of demographic transition. You can see in this graph that the country shown here, the TFR dropped dramatically from 1965 to 2005. Again, educating women, providing access to contraceptives, providing access to information about family planning, among other factors, serve to drive down birth rates. As countries progress through demographic transition, more and more of the population lives in urban areas. The population shifts from the agricultural sector to the service sector. Urban populations tend to be better educated, have more income, live in smaller spaces, experience higher living costs. All of these factors play a role in reducing birth rates in urban areas. With increasing standards of living, particularly access to medical care, access to clean drinking water, and increased sanitation, in other words, systems that reduce sewage, life expectancy rises, and the population transitions from the industrial, stage three, to the post-industrial, stage four. And in this table, you can see the relationship between per capita GDP income, life expectancy at birth, infant mortality, and literacy. The countries that have moved into the post-industrial stage four of demographic transition have strong performance in all of these categories. And if you're unsure about the importance of education in progressing through demographic transition, look at the countries here with low literacy rates and notice the effect on infant mortality and life expectancy and you know that the natural increase rate in these countries is high as the populations in these countries swell through the transitional stage two of demographic transition. Among the economic issues faced by countries in the post-industrial stage four of demographic transition, one of them is an increased number of older people. 
older people no longer working require social services typically paid for by the state. The more people you have in this older cohort, the more the economic strain on the money is available for social services. And if the number of working people is less, such that fewer monies are going into the social service pot, there may not be enough money to fund the required social services for programs for the elderly. Here is an image of the Earth's lights at night. Can you see the countries who have entered the post-industrial stage of demographic transition? Can you see the locations that remain in the pre-industrial or transitional stage of demographic transition? And that brings us to the end of Population Biology and Human Populations, Part 7.